Hello. <clears throat> Hiya. So I'm back. Um, I did a bit more um, to the vase there off video. Um, I don't know what that was about. Why did I do that? I think I wanted to clearly set up the space within which the, the lilies would be um, painted to kind of know that their, their relationship to the vase. And I just started doing it without even thinking of turning this on in between dropping uh, the children to well, dropping Lily to the bus for her Halloween party and different things. So we're all settled now and uh, I'm back here to do a bit more to the Lily. Those, I think I might share this on YouTube anyway. So just to let you know, um, the reason I'm talking about it as though there's a part one is because the part one was a live um, Zoom session I had with the group of lovely flower painting people. So you know who you are. Um, and I wanted to do a bit more, to bring a bit more substance to the lily that you see to the right of me here that's not yet been painted with um, the gusto. I mean, it's got the the outline, the general gist of it from the angle that I've got standing at the easel there, but I wanted to brighten it up because it's all about that. So the lily and the and the um, bud above it, which I've been experimenting with. I'm trying to get a colour that reads as bright um, bright enough for that bud and I've used my fluorescent inks particularly the first fluorescent yellow acrylic ink on clean white paper and I might use this um a bit of collage on that bud maybe but let's just see when I turn around what I think but I feel like I want to start with yeah so with my eyes half closed yeah I want to go back and use some more of the Payne's grey it's acrylic that I'm using today oh dear me but some acrylic ink onto the palette there. So I use some of the red um, the red acrylic ink as well to describe the side of the pot or parts of the pot there just to get it firmly located. So what I feel like I want to do is to bring more Payne's Grey. There's Payne's Grey here. I want to darken down and use some of the blue as well to make it the colour of the background that I'm seeking. Okay. I hope that's going to be dark enough now. Be a wee bit more Payne's grey. It had some white in it, you see. Okay. Because I want to set the scene for the brightness of the white. And there's a leaf there as well now. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to locate the stem as it's as it stands out from the from the vase. I'm going to let it come over a little bit here, am I? Let's see. I'm just finding the shape at the edge of the petals of this, the lily. I think I might have said sunflower by mistake earlier. Sorry if I did. Um, I'm trying to find the edge of the petals in relation to the edge of the leaf that's sticking down here at the back. The leaf is darker now than the background, but I'm just outlining it first with the background colour itself. So that relationship isn't true, like that's going to be darker, dark green. It's quite a pleasing dark green, that colour. And then you get the... Um, the stem as it enters into the into the orange vase there. Now you can probably tell that the red isn't dried completely because it's it's uh, making itself known in the background colour there. So I just put a bit of yellow and blue in to cancel out the red. Right, I'm going to stand back and just see how I'm getting on with that. Okay, yeah, like sooner rather than later sooner rather than later I want to paint in that dark of the leaf because it's um, distracting the relationship isn't true it needs to be darker than the background but I'm still working with my eyes half closed locating things in space best I can relationship that they're having to each other and um, 
trying at the same time not to do too much as well because I like the lost and found thing that happens sometimes. Let's see now, this needs to drift back further. Or maybe this can come down and forwards a little bit. Okay, so this would be over a little bit further, that petal there. And it extends up here then. And we've got this steeply sloping stem. I'll try and say that quick, quickly. There's another leaf that I might end up chopping off. <laughs> I don't know when I have not. To see what it looks like without it. Mm -hmm. It's gone now. Mm -hmm. So the bend is across from there, the bend on the stem. And the stem is a little bit lower. relationship to parts. It's not lower actually, it's higher. Okay. Yeah, I think I will put in that dark green leaf lay. Maybe I could even just not put it in at all for a while. Because it's not hugely important that leaf. It's not like a big. It's not like it makes a big difference. Just in negotiating positions of things here. the character of it you know and how it sprouts from the stem so that's why it feels to me like it's important to get the relationship between the stem and the rest of the plant as truthfully as I can you know and then there's the bud that extends up there okay still filling in the negative spaces now and then where the background stops and the flowers begin. Okay. Yeah, and there's a little bit of that flash of that um, petal on the other side is pos is seen. Is seen too. back again now and consider once I've done a little bit more to this area I'm going to stand back and consider whether I'm ready then whether I'm ready to begin fine tuning I guess you know and and, and creating like modeling the shapes of the petals as convincingly as I can but I first want to be absolutely sure that I'm Happy with the location of the petals and the spaces between them. This is something that matters to me anyway, you know, making sure that I found the position of something feels important. Doesn't it doesn't always 
contain such gravitas, but today it seems to be important to me that I get the position of things as well as I can. Of course, it's getting a bit darker all the time too, so conscious that I want to do something before the dark really sets in. But um, explains the flowers. Natalie, do you need to walk? She needs a walk as well, of course. I like the blue, the injection of blue somehow. It's ultramarine blue. <clears throat> right. I seem to still be working up to things. So I feel like I want to make a bold statement here now. Okay, let's sort out right the contrast between the background and the petals is fairly marked so um i'm going to tear off the top sheet of this palette because it's too messy now to be able to get it i want to start again you know to, to get the color of the um shadows in the um lily flower and I don't want to start with a palette that's covered with grey. Um, okay, let's get a handle on the brightest. Maybe I just need to go straight for the brightest tones in that lily. And I think it's pretty well titanium white that I'm looking for there. So let's see, put some white on here. That's a pretty light area. My brush isn't very clean, my water isn't very clean. And um, I'm a bit cross with myself about that, so I'm going to quickly get some clean water. Give the brushes a rinse under the tap while I'm at it. back on. Right, let me find a good clean brush here. I've got kitchen paper too. I wonder whether maybe what I could do here is to, um, even just as a standard for brightness, whether I could tear some of this off and put it on. No, I don't want to do that yet, do I? Let's see. So that's the, the colour I came up with for the brightness on the buds over there. Maybe I should try it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give it a shot. And it might encourage me to go a bit brighter than elsewhere. Just putting the glue on the windowsill here. I folded the edge, which isn't like me, but I just wanted to get a crisp edge there. And I'll tear off this side now because it's darker on that side still. I don't need it to be bright all over. Right, so let's just consider that. So I'll leave it. Too much now. Oh, for goodness sake. I was liking my crisply folded edge there. Right, so I've got some here now, I could also use it. Do you know, I don't know if there's anywhere else that's as bright as that, except for maybe the little bit down here, the underside of the petal. 
the stems aren't really that bright. Be a little flash of it there. The right hand side of the stem over here is quite bright. So I could maybe use it for a little bit of that too. Okay, I wonder whether I'll need to use collage paper rather than white paint to live up to the brightness now. I think I might do that, white collage rather than white acrylic. But let's work with the acrylic for a while before making that decision. So I do want to work with paint, I have a feeling I want to work with paint today. So looking at the stem the top part where I put the glue on, I might as well put some st the stem there too. Okay. Let's see if the white paint is going to cut it for me. significantly brighter you see than anything there anything else there so I'm gonna really lay it on thick there the light on the flowers is the thickest is the the brightest of the whole thing really so I'm just scooping up the paint so there's a thick layer of it on the brush see how thick that is and then turning it over and with my eyes half closed I'm deciding which parts of the flower can justify that brightness and so there's a bit back here. It's brighter than the petal, which is quite dark in front of it. And then there too is quite bright. I'm tempted to go and start drawing the other flowers too. So my eyes are still half closed. Now really focusing here to find the light and not just put it where I think it might be, but to really observe and see where the light is best I can. And we need to come up now with a kind of a mid-tone. Let me see what other colours are in that lily. I started with yellow ochre for some reason to try and capture the shadow. But I'm going to need to put a bit of blue in it, I think. To capture the shadow, that's um, to describe the shadow of the lily petals that aren't facing the light, that aren't capturing the light. Let's see, I think this isn't a bad colour now that I've got here. Yellow ochre with the ultramarine blue and um, just some white mixed in. Just to get that mid-tone. at the relationship of parts of the lily to each other and to the background colour which I'm considering making darker again but we'll see it's, it feels good whether um, it, it just feels good to be using thicker paint now to be describing the lily with thicker paint it has a satisfaction of its own it's like I've been working up to this somehow. Now I need to take care though to see the relationships. So this petal, although it's really bright at the end, 
cast, there's a shadow cast by the other petal onto it, which makes it quite dark, even maybe darker than that. Might need to use a little bit of blue to deepen the tone as it meets the other to make it darker where the cast shadow from the other petal is landing on this one. I just needed it to be a touch darker there. There's a few more places where I will need to use that darker colour, so I'll mix it up later when I'm using up more of it. But for now, I'm just going for the mid-tone still. The bits of the flower that are not quite crisp white, but they're not that dark either. And step back every so often that I don't end up doing too much. So I've got this mid-tone on the brush here now to describe the bit that's folding in. And this is it's important to me that the colour is consistent and that it doesn't have like when I when I aim for a colour, if I see streaks like that coming through it, I go back here now and make it flat again, make it one single colour. I don't want for personally I don't like when I'm trying to get a colour um clear, like a mid-tone clearly. I want it to be only that colour. I don't want it to have streaks of blue and brown going through it. So that's the carving over. I think we can blend this white bit into something a little bit darker as it goes back. Gradual changing from light to dark here. And again, I need to use the very dark color that I'm gonna mix next um, in places there. I'm still on the kind of mid-tone. I'm kind of wary too that I don't... I'm, I'm doing a video, Erin. I'm doing a video. I'm kind of wary too that I don't end up just filling it all in like... Um, Kind of religiously capturing every single part of it. But to get the highlights, the parts of intersection where, the points of intersection where it changes from one way to another way, often the light and shade will really help to describe that transition from one tone to another. From one, um, oh, I've lifted off a bit of the, I seem to have lifted off some of the, um, colour I put on unless it was just on my finger. Where there would be honest. I can't see any glaringly obvious place but I've lifted it off anyway. Okay, let's see now. Hmm. You okay? Parcel, something came through the door. Earlier today? No, I didn't take anything. I think what I want to do next really is because there's, there's a lot of bits and pieces isn't there in that lily but maybe it'll resolve itself if I do the green elsewhere maybe I just need to put a little bit more grey in here just to let it read this kind of cohesive And the 
there's a leaf a petal beyond on the other side there that's a mid-tone as well I don't know if it helps to put that in or not anyway it's done now right I can lift it out when it dries maybe Right, so what I thought I would do next is to describe the, um, the stem here in the same kind of light. I need some yellow and I don't want to use the yellow ink, I want to use the yellow, lemon yellow acrylic, which looks like that, to make the stem with the ultramarine blue. And um, because I want to paint the stem on ultramarine blue mixed with white I think will give me the colour of that stem it's not bad is it excuse me I could put a little bit more yellow and again I'm wanting it to be an opaque colour not with streaks in it and a bit more white Wanted to stand out well too from the background. Let's just try that. As I was saying in the Zoom call earlier, sometimes you don't know really what a colour will read as unless it's actually on the painting. This looks to be a good tone for what I'm after. I'm not going to occupy all of the stem now because the right hand side of the stem is in shadow still. So. color here I think maybe a touch of it at the top of that too and it might be just a touch lighter maybe less colorful will describe the um, stamen here which aren't really that bright but there's a couple of them that are standing out more than others that I could explain with the slightly thicker dullish green that I've got on the brush now. Slightly thicker paint. And at the end there it's a little bit lighter too I think. And then there's a lovely almost like a yellow a uh, white yellow vein that runs down here which is why I think I put the green bit of collage there. And I think that could be exploited elsewhere too, there. My brush isn't that clean, but I'm trusting that it's not, it's not gonna mix in too much with what's already, I've just li lifted up the bright yellow white. And I'm hoping that it's not going to be changed by the colour that was already on the brush. It goes over here then. And there's some of it too here. And there's a vein running up here as well. I'm going to see, assess the situation before going too far with these veins. it's okay but I feel like I want to bring that colour into the stamen a bit more make it brighter here now that there's some brighter ones out here and it might not be any harm to just do the um you okay Aaron? are you heading off now? Uh, so what's wrong? I got next day delivery two days ago oh Oh, for goodness sake. I hate that when you pay for next day delivery. Yeah, they say it has to be before 11 with the order. And I was like, oh yeah, because it was 10. 
Ah. And then it didn't arrive. Just thought I'd use some of that colour in the bud as well. Okay. What is it coming? Yeah. All right. Phew. Aaron, if it's your driving license, it's here on the piano. Your driving license is on the piano here. Sorry for yelling into the mic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Might have had a drink free evening. You might have had a drink free evening. Well, I'm driving all the way through to Glasgow. You won't be able to get in, like, yeah. Uh, can see it a bit though. I'm um, going to put some more green on the brush and fill in that bud up here with something a little bit deeper in tone. It feels like the way I've done that, like I want to do, the mo to do more lilies so that it doesn't, because it looks a bit bitty, but I want it not to be overly painted either. So I'd say once I put the stamen on there now, what's wrong? Once I put the stamen on there, I'd say that'll make a difference too. Like it'll kind of settle down the rest of it a bit. So I'm mixing some. Um, I think I might be on the little round table, Erin. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> right, see you, love. Okay, so I'm mixing some of the lemon yellow and ultramarine blue together to make the shadows darker on this side of the pod. Hmm. I'm going to put a bit of burnt sienna into that because I think it's still too colourful. Yeah, the burnt sienna mixed with the ultramarine blue, I think, makes a better shade for the side that's in shadow. So much so that it's hard to see the edge of it as it meets the background from where I'm standing at least. Okay, so let's try the stamen next. The one that I did before, I just did it with the um, oil pastel. I'll just show you what it looks like there. You know that colour. It's a bit dark though. What am I doing now with that? I wonder if I was to put a touch of... Um, oh yeah, I'm kind of excited to try this. I was thinking if I put a touch of this fluorescent ink over... This is orange fluorescent ink. If I put a touch of that over what's on there, I really need to be careful that it doesn't just run. I think it kind of works to describe the brightness. So the combination of the burnt sienna oil pastel, and maybe even a darker one too. So I'll start with the dark brown oil pastel to describe bits in the distance and you know, parts of the stamen me things that are really dark. And then I'm going to put on the burnt sienna, which is the touch lighter. And the pièce de résistance then, of course, will be that ink, the fluorescent ink. But I feel like it works. I guess this one goes across there. I feel like the fluorescent ink is the thing that I'm after to really get the brightness. I 
don't know what you think of that now, whether it works or not, but I wanted to try it and see when I stand back. The other thing that I think works very well for um, describing those statements is torn paper collage. So I might just put one, one bit of collage on just to see, you know, like something I took off the vase actually looks to me to be a good colour for the okay see ya looks to me to be a good colour for the brightest part at least well it's better to remember now than later halfway to Glasgow Bye. Yeah, I kind of like it stuck on. Something about sticking stuff on appeals to me. So I'm putting a bit of a slightly darker one now as well. I'm putting that on here because it's a bit dark, but it stands out in relief. I, I don't know if that works or not, but. Do you know what I feel like I want to do? And I can understand the reason for this. I want to paint in between them because actually, the way that it is now, the stamen is darker. The stamen are darker than the wall beyond. And so, yeah, so the, while the wall is darker by far than the lily, it's actually a bit lighter than the stamen, significantly lighter than the stamen. So I need to do a bit of playing around with the background colour here now. And that'll hopefully help to enhance the contrast. So I'm using blue and brown mixed together. I know it's getting a bit dark. No guys, sorry about that. I'm using the ultramarine blue mixed with the burnt sienna to really capture the depth of tone there where the white lily meets the background. And I'm going to use it as well to carve in again over the white bits that I've put on in places. So there's a, a white here that could do with the corner taken off it. I'm coming back to get the dark colour on the brush again to help identify again the curling shape here and then the curling shape the arc above where it comes down and in just to kind of find again the curving nature of these petals and down here as well there's um, another dark patch to really I'm going to have to go over here to What do I want to do? Yes, I want to follow this curve with the dark. And it's just easier for my hand to do it from this direction than the other way. I'm just going to fill in the bits that didn't quite make it. Because the crispness of that edge is important to me. And down here as well. Again, I'm taking the corner off that cur curling petal. And I'm going to eliminate the petal that I had included in the background. I don't think that's helping. There. No, it's interesting, isn't it, that all of this is darker than. darker than the lily. Whereas when we come around to the stamen, they're darker than the background. So I need to somehow make a background colour that'll read as being lighter, but still be convincing. And over beside those stamen to help them to stand out. Okay, 
Yeah, and I think I could start out here. Yeah, I'll start out there because do you know what now? The background is darker than this bit, this little bit here. So I'm gonna let that still be light and let the dark come up to meet it. And I think I'm gonna need to give myself some Haynes Grey or some darker colour that I can use um, to describe the blackest bits of the stamen of those um, whatever those flaky bits are at the top of the stamen browny I think I need to get a darkish brown that I can use to describe them the darkest parts of them I think increase the tone in the background. I suppose it is getting darker too, of course. But um, but still, the background comes through there, and as it reaches the stamen, it gets lighter. I'm just going to lift off that bit that came across. Came across the green by mistake. Um, still filling in the gaps here. I'm going to make the background a touch lighter now as we get to the top of the, in order to contrast with the stamen there. Make the background a little bit lighter again here. It's all in the relationship, isn't it? Relationship of dark to light. And like Matt Haig said, the shadows, for example, in a river accentuate the brightness of it. So the dark of the background accentuates the brightness of the stamen and things. So I just need to find now, I think, um, a colour that's going to be bright enough to sculpt the stamen on this side. Background colour. That doesn't read as the same as the shadows in the lily, but that makes it dark enough, light enough that it'll let the stamen, the orangey bits, stand out. And you want something to describe the end of that dome-shaped bit. There's something there. I mean, it's all right. I'm kind of going on and on. The words dog's dinner came to mind there, but I'm <laughs> going to just shelve that attitude and remind you and myself that mostly this is about morale, keeping up the morale. And if you can manage to hold your nerve, keep the faith and all the rest of it, and just listen to those thoughts that uh, speak kindly. And the ones that are exhibiting curiosity as to what's here still, which is what I'm aiming to do, then you'll be fine. Just trying to find those finer shadows. Yeah, we're getting there. I think I might just leave that now as the 
as uh, you know enough for now good enough for now remember i was talking about putting some darks too into the i just see one area all right where maybe a dark patch would be useful a very dark bit there just to let the background come through a touch and there's also a very dark bit here it's a bit risky using the same brush as I used for the white, but I've just lifted up a bit of a blob of dark in the corner. Seems to work. Just a point of intersection could be darker there as well. A part of me, I don't want to use the same dark colour for the stamen, but a part of me is desperate to get just a touch darker. And I think if I use a brown, a different, you know, if I make it a different way. What have I got here now? Oh, what's this called? Burnt umber. If I use a bit of burnt umber there. Instead of the burnt sienna. I can use a bit of this to describe the really dark bits. Of the orangey. The orangey bits because I'm kind of missing a dark colour there and I don't want it to be the same as the bluish tones of the background. Yeah, that's satisfying to me. It's even got a grittiness that reads as the pollen soaked bits. It's probably just because it's old paint or something. I don't know, it's gritty anyway, which is satisfying to me which you probably can't see from there. If any of you wanted to paint the flowers as I'm seeing them, send me a message and I'll send you the photograph. If you want to do this alongside me, look at this now, what I'm doing is I'm putting the brown that I said I didn't want to read as the background into the background. <laughs> okay, where am I going next? Yeah, you know what now, I'm just going to mix that brown with some ultramarine blue because the top of that bud is also darker than the background. Just the top of it. I'm trying to still negotiate relationship here. Where else? I left that leaf out, I'm not sure if it would enhance things or if, or if it would just, I think for now I'll leave it alone. I won't bother putting it in for now. There's another lily right here and whether I do it or not I might leave it until tomorrow anyway. But I think something needs to happen elsewhere. I'm a fan of leaving things, you know, if I, if I can force myself to leave stuff half done or where it feels like it's not, comp it's not um, painted out to the edges, I like that to keep some of the life of the evidence of the process of painting it too and looking and all that and to see that it's kind of in in flux still i like that about about it um, painting however i think this maybe is a bit of an edge it's it's maybe got uh, not got quite um i think it's on the edge of that level of finish that means that it's more reading is unfinished than exciting i mean it's exciting to me now but I don't think I could actually stop here and say that's the end of that painting. There needs to be something more, I think, drawn here. It might just be drawn, yeah. Not painted out or anything. I'll pull you back so you can see the full thing. You don't know what I'm talking about then. Do you know there's big there's an obvious gap like here. So I don't know if I'll um might, might use my stick. Like I was talking earlier about that, using um stick with a bit of charcoal or other chalk on the end to draw you know I might even use oh there's some really exciting 
relationships of color there like with the white oil pastel at the end of the brush you might be able to begin finding the brightness there of the stem and then the charcoal really is better for describing the underside of the flower Yeah, it needs to concentrate and locate the real position of it in relation to the bottom of the to the jug below the to the vase below. Because I think maybe the vase sits back there. The reason I would use the stick and um, with the charcoal at the end is that I don't want to become too safe or feel like I'm really too in control of the marks. I want to have that element of chance and to keep me on, on edge a little bit too, like on, in a good way. So this flower seems to have a, it has a bend here and then there's a lovely white bit there, the edge of that petal. I think I'll come back to this tomorrow because there's, um, it's getting darker and darker and this is a very long video. But you know, you can see how that might fill in that space quite nicely. And um, something needs to happen in here as well. And I don't know if it is that leaf that is an actual fact sitting there or if it needs something else introduced. That leaf might be enough actually. And then there's one that goes off quite gracefully towards the light. It might be that that'll set the scene enough for this flower to be brought up into some detail. And then there's um, <coughs> a second bud over to the left as well. <coughs> that actually is even brighter and the existing one. And it sits, you know, uh, where does it sit? But there. Mm. <coughs> so we'll see. It might be that the pot itself just needs to be less dominant as well. And maybe the tabletop could be described with something. It's nice and bright, the tabletop. And as it comes out the other side as well. Maybe something about identifying that could help as well. Because it's as bright as the flower is. And it could be, just before you go, why don't I do something on the tabletop? Um, I actually got this lovely um, collage paper. <coughs> it's nice, isn't it? Might work for the tabletop. Because I want it to be as bright as that, but not to look the same as it. I was thinking of that, or else a stencil or something. Yeah, I kind of like that there. It helps me to see it on the screen. Somehow I like this one better from this angle.
Yeah, I think it's this one. to extend out the other side. I've got the house to myself tonight now because the two girls have gone out. I could do something. Have a nice dinner for myself and watch something. There's some good programs on the BBC. I think it's um, BBC Four has some good programmes about artists' lives and how they've been represented. Maybe we watch something like that. Let's see. I don't know about the collage there. Let's see what it would look like if I was to put that into the little gap. We're getting fiddly now. <laughs> This is the kind of thing I could do off camera <laughs> rather than drag you along with me playing about stuff that'll probably be torn off like the like it was torn off the vase earlier. I kind of like that for the dark and the petal there. I think I might sneak that in. I'm tethered to the chair with the microphone and I don't know if it's pulling you every time I turn around but it's pulling me anyway I'm like an animal tied to like an animal tied to the uh, camera okay right let's bring you in it's time enough I, I think time to stop now I'd say I'll probably lift off that collage again I'm not happy with that side anyway maybe the other will stay we'll see I'm not sure I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay. Someone tell me to stop. Seriously. All right. Good talking to you. And uh, thanks for joining me for the lily. I'll put you in a little bit closer again before I say goodbye. That's it. You can see the little bit of collage there, which I might take off when I turn off the camera. Okay. There's a self-portrait over there, you see. <clears throat> Alright guys. Yeah, that's just an hour. True to form. Okay, see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.